Good morning and welcome to worship at Grace Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're here. I'd like to remind everyone that there are three ways that you can give to Grace and honor your pledge. The first is you can mail a check to our post office box and that's fine. We'll, we will take that to the bank. But you can also go to our website www.gracelanham.org and you'll see a Give Now button there. If you hit that, you can set up a one-time gift or you can set it up as a weekly or monthly gift. It's safe, it's convenient, and you don't have to, to worry about not being in church and not being able to, to put money in the offering plate. There's also a phone app. If you go to the same site and go to the multimedia tab, pull that down, and you'll see a video about how to set your phone up for the phone app Giving to Grace. And now, let's worship the Lord together. See you. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, and I'm going to read from verse 11 through 15. The bread from heaven. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. kids, guess what time it is? It's time for the young disciples. So grab your brother or sister, have a seat, and let's hear a story. Today I want to talk about in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel had escaped from slavery in Egypt. And they were out in the wilderness and they didn't have food or water. And they complained against Moses and they said, did you lead us out here to die in this desert with nothing to eat and nothing to drink? And they wished that they were back in slavery in Egypt. So the Lord said to Moses, he said, I'm going to provide for the people some food. And the Lord provided quail, which is a kind of bird that's good to eat, and also manna. And manna was kind of a strange thing. And, and the people, when they saw it, they said, what is it? 
And it was a, a kind of a bread that, that they were able to gather and, and eat. And so everybody had their fill of quail and manna. And the Lord also provided water for them. The Lord provides. The Lord provides for you and me, just as he provided for the children of Israel. And now I want to sing a song, which we've done before. So hopefully you remember it and you can sing along with me. And the song is Jehovah Jireh. Now Jehovah is an old name that some people use for God. And Jireh is a Hebrew word, or it's a variation of a Hebrew word meaning provider. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, the God who provides. If you know it, sing along with me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God shall supply all my needs according to Once again, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this day, the day that you have made. We thank you for bringing us together. Even though we are not in person, we are still a congregation worshiping together, each in our own homes and through the miracle of technology that you have given us. Lord, we lift up our congregation. We pray for our families, for our members, and we especially lift up those for whom we have concern. We continue to pray for Jay and we ask that you strengthen him and heal him. And we lift him up and, and all those who are caring for him. We pray for our sister Dorita and her brother, her, their, their family. And we, we ask that you, you bless them at this time. We continue to pray for our elder George, for Coco. And Lord, we lift up our nation to you. We pray for those who are suffering from the effects of fire on the West Coast, those who have lost property, those who have lost their lives. We pray for those who are dealing with the aftermaths of storms in the Gulf of Mexico. We pray for those who are affected by the coronavirus. Lord, we pray for a cure. We pray for this sickness to pass and we ask that you bless those who have, have lost loved ones, those who have lost their livelihood. We pray for our kids who are back at school, who are, are learning at home, and we pray for the parents who are, are, are helping them to, to, uh, to learn and helping them with their studies. Lord, we know there is also strife in this country, strife overseas, and we lift up the nation of Cameroon to you this morning. And, Lord, we pray for all those who are crying out for justice, those who are crying out for peace. And Lord, we ask that, that you hear their cries, and we know that you do. And we ask that you also help us to hear the cries of the oppressed. Lord, at this time, I lift up our silent prayers to you, and I ask that you hear what is on our hearts.
With boldness, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 20, and I'm reading verses 1 through 16. The laborers in the vineyard. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he, went, he sent them out into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go out into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go out into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only about one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what, I, with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the, f the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Is God fair? You may say, well, of course, God is fair. God is God after all. But there are others who might say, well, not exactly. And they might give you a reason why they believe that God is not so fair. I think this whole question can be answered about the fairness of God with two stories. The first is the story of the manna from heaven in the book of Exodus from our first reading. And the second is in our gospel reading from Matthew about the workers in the vineyard. And I think both of these have implications for us and for how fair we are as human beings. So the story of the, the manna from heaven is a favorite Bible story. And it's one that I talked about earlier with the, the children. And we know that God brought the plague upon the Egyptians. He had Moses lead the children of Israel through the Red Sea, part of the Red Sea. And, and led them through the desert. He gave them water for the journey. And still, the people of Israel grumbled. They even said that they wished they were back in Egypt, back in bondage, in slavery. How would you respond if you were God about this ungrateful people? I know what human nature says, how we might want to respond. But how does God respond? He gives them manna and quail for food. And yet they continued to be disobedient. The second story is the workers in the vineyard from Matthew chapter 20. And it's a very simple story. It's simple, yet it's complex. And there have been a lot of different interpretations of, of the story. What did Jesus mean when he told this story? I'm aware that this is a story about a labor pool. If you go to any, um, any big city, if you go to, to 
to DC or any place. There are places where workers who, who do not have a job and who hope to have work for at least a day will gather around. And then there are people who will come and hire them. They might hire them for construction jobs, they might hire them for landscaping jobs, they might hire them even to, to, uh, to, to move uh, freight and, and, and household goods for moving companies, for trucking companies. But there are people that, that hope to have work for at least one day, they gather together and, and hope that an employer will come and hire them. And this is what happens in Matthew. It's a labor pool. And somebody comes and hires some men to work in his vineyard. Not all of us are equally blessed. You know, some of us have more blessings than others. Some of us are more attractive than others. Some of us have talents that other people don't have. Um, some of us have wealth that we might have inherited. Some of us may have, have uh, health uh, or, or even health problems that we have inherited. So, so all of us are not equal altogether. You know, there are, are differences between us and there are things that we have, have no control over. We're created equally in the image of God, but we're not all blessed in the same way. And you could say that's one interpretation of the story. Also, you could take a look at the Jewish converts to Christianity, those who, who followed Jesus, who, who were of the Hebrew people, and, and they see uh, Gentiles coming to Christ. They, they see people who are, are, uh, are not following the Jewish law, people who, who are, 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 have not been worshiping the Lord, and now they're able to be saved. The, the grace of God extends not just to the Jewish people, but to the Gentiles, to others, to sinners, in fact. And there are some who say, wait a minute, that's not fair. You know, we've been following the law all this time. We've been doing what we're supposed to do, doing the do's and not doing the don'ts. And then these people come along and they get is the, the same grace that we get. They get to go to heaven just as we get. And some people would actually resent that. Remember the Canaanite woman in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus tells her, I was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. But she says, even dogs get crumbs from the master's table. The Jewish people were faithful to God for generation. And then God opens the gates for all to come in. And that's another interpretation of the story. It's a story of forgiveness. It's a story of God's grace that, that is there for all of us. These Bible stories are, are true on so many levels and there's so much there. My point is this, we want great God's grace for ourselves, but how often do we want it for others? We are often not as fair ourselves as we think we should be, or not as fair, certainly, as, as God is. There are those fine, upstanding people who think, well, of course the Lord should bless me. And there are the people who are, 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 are uh, proud to be faithful, lifelong Christians, those who are baptized and raised in the church, those who keep the Ten Commandments, those who read the Bible and pray every day. They, they try to avoid doing the, the things they shouldn't do. They don't use bad language. And, and uh, you know, they, they say, hey, I, I do all these good things. I do what the Lord is, wants me to do. And yet there are others that God will forgive and offer his grace and welcome into the kingdom. It's like someone in a mo uh, labor pool who says, I worked all day. This person comes in later in the day and we all get the same reward or somebody in the desert grumbling and yet they still get their manna and quail to eat. Last week I talked about the Lord's Prayer and mentioned that we pray forgive us as we forgive others and Jesus goes to, on to explain in Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 through 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. Our world is different as followers of God, as believers. 
we believe that God's grace does extend to others. And none of us actually are, are deserving of God's grace. We're the same people who grumbled in the desert. We're the same people who grumbled at the end of the day that others were getting rewarded, the same reward that, that we get. Our world looks at these things and has a different viewpoint. Grace is a two-way street. How can we expect God to forgive us when we cannot forgive others? The children of Israel did not get what they deserved. The workers in the vineyard, too, got for, far more than they deserved. Is God fair? Absolutely. Indeed, more than fair. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank you for providing for your, your children, in the desert, the, the children of Israel, you provided for them and led them out of bondage and slavery. We thank you for providing your grace to the people in Jesus' time, the, those who heard him preach and those who followed him. And we thank you for extending your grace to us. We know that in your world, the last shall be first and the first shall be last and your grace extends to us and your grace is sufficient. I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Our creed this morning is the Apostles' Creed, and I invite you to follow along with me at home. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen.
Our worship is now concluded. Before we go, let's say our pledge together. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as you go, receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and go with grace.